We've often said that adding compost to your garden is the best thing you can do to get your garden to look like this. But very often, people can't find enough compost ingredients to make all the compost they'd like. I'm Elliot Coleman. And I'm Barbara Damrosh. And if you'll stay with us for the next half hour, we'll take you on a treasure hunt for compost materials. On Gardening Natural. Nature never ceases to fascinate me because nothing is wasted. Every creature that lives and dies is recycled into a usable product for something else. That's right. Leaves that fall, flowers that die, minerals, animal wastes. Nature turns all of these things into fertile soil. And she does this with the help of many organisms, some of them big enough to see, like earthworms, some of them microscopic, like soil bacteria. Now, one way to encourage that in your yard is to make compost, and it even speeds up the process. And most of the ingredients for your compost heap can come right from your yard. In fact, yard wastes account for 25% of what fills landfills, and these are all compostable. Well, if you can't find enough in your yard, look around your neighborhood, see what you can find there, because by doing this, you turn sadness into joy. People get very sad at the idea of a waste product. I can remember an old neighbor telling me, with a very glum look, oh, there are four bushels of rotten potatoes in my basement. And he didn't understand when I suddenly brightened up and I said, great, can I have them? For me, they were a resource. Speaking of resources, Elliot, we could use a few more ingredients for this compost heap. Well, we know how to get them. Road trip! Barbara, you shovel, I'll dump. Enough. We're at a rock quarry. Now that may seem like a strange place to get fertilizer, but it really isn't. Well, after all, what a soil. It's just pulverized rock with some organic matter in it. And in the rock crushing operation, there are a lot of very, very fine particles created called fines or floats that there's very little use for. In fact, in most cases, it's given away free to you. But these all contain nutrients for your soil. Right. Basalt is my favorite rock for this, and an analysis of rock from a basalt quarry says that it has calcium, magnesium, actually 10% calcium, it has phosphorus, potassium, this is a pretty good fertilizer. Any quarry should be able to give you an analysis of what's in the piles, too. Just ask them for it. Now I apply this I spread it like lime right on the soil, or as we're going to do, we mix it in with the compost heap. And the dilute acids in the compost help act on the small rock particles and make the minerals in them available to your plants. Now this is a long-term operation. This stuff will be available in your soil long after the organic matter of the compost has been used up. That's why this is such a good pre-fertilizer to find. for our compost now we need some of that organic matter right and one of our first thoughts was to come to a local brewery now this is 
something that we found in our neighborhood, but chances are there's one in your neighborhood too, because small local breweries where they make stout or beer or ale are becoming really popular these days. And they have excellent waste for composting, the spent grains from the brewing process and the spent hops. And the nice thing about using a food quality waste is that you know there are not going to be toxic impurities in them. Well, let's go get some. Sure. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Hi, Todd. Todd. Boy, our compost heap is going to love this stuff. Yeah, this works real well in the compost. This is used barley grain from, uh, from brewing. Oh, yeah. It's about 1% nitrogen. And I also have some hops for you, used hops. That'll be are, great. Yeah, they're 2 to 3% nitrogen. Well, yeah. dump them in there. I love this stuff. It's all finely ground. It's going to compost like the dickens. Thank you very Good much. Enough. Thank you very much, Todd. Nice to see you out here. the kind of place where you might want to change your footwear. Manure has been the traditional garden amendment for many, many years. And still today, suburbanites drive out to the countryside to pick up some manure from a barnyard. But the reason it became especially popular was because that used to be reversed. Farmers used to take loads of produce into the city in the days of horse and buggy and then pick up loads of horse manure at the city stables to take back out to their farms. Now this system here is where a paddock has been scraped and there's a lot of fresh manure perhaps mix, mixed with some soil and this is fine. Sometimes when you go to a horse farm it'll be a completely different operation. They're going to make big piles out of what they've shoveled out of the stalls. That'll often have a lot of bedding in it like sawdust or shavings. When you find a pile like that it's worth seeing if in the back of the pile there's some really old horse manure, good crumbly black stuff that's been there for years. That's the best stuff to get because it's already rotted. Even if it means trying to drive your truck around and back or even bringing some feed sacks, filling them up one by one and bringing them to your vehicle. Now when manure is fresh like this, you don't want to use it directly on the garden because it has heating properties and it'll burn your vegetables. But those same heating properties make it an outstanding addition to the compost heap because that will help heat up and speed the decomposition of the other products you're putting in there. Especially if it comes mixed with some old hay like this, which will be the perfect counterpoint in your composting project. <laughs> fertilizer and especially my favorite the shells of crabs and lobsters these contain a lot of nitrogen a lot of calcium and almost everything else that a plant could ever want to have in the soil the other great thing about these shells is that they really heat up a compost heap gets that decomposition going so it's good to really distribute them throughout the heap to spread the heat around and even if they didn't have any fertilizer value they have another important attribute in your soil the shells of crabs and lobsters contain a material called chitin, and this has been shown to be more effective than anything you can add at dealing with nematode problems in your soil. In fact, it's so successful, it's even sold for that purpose. Now, you may not be lucky enough to live near the coast and have a source like this one, but maybe you have a seafood restaurant in your town that serves a lot of shrimp and crab and lobster. Make a deal with them for their kitchen wastes. Well, we're going to go dump this in one of the barrels in our truck, and then we're going to show you another good seacoast fertilizer resource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
today has brought us a nice little seaweed harvest. You know, for centuries, coastal gardeners have been using seaweed for their gardens to enrich the soil. Seaweed is a wonderful fertilizer for a couple of reasons. First, it's rich in potassium, which none of the other ingredients we've gotten today is. And secondly, it has every conceivable trace element. That is, the nutrients your plants need in small quantities, but that are so important to them. And another thing, just like the crab waste that we showed you, seaweed breaks down very readily in your compost pile. Matter of fact, it's so good that they will often dry it and sell it in bags commercially to people who live inland. Now, this is a gift that we get because we live near the sea, and it isn't available to everybody. But you know, nature is really generous. And if you think about it, I bet you can find a gift like this for your garden in almost any area where you live. Now here's a compost resource that everybody has access to, weed. Yeah, a neighbor of ours said that we could cut his weeds down for him for our compost heap. Elliot, ideally, it would have been better if we could have gotten these earlier in the season before they had flowered and set seeds that might sprout in the compost heap. Yeah, that's true. But you know, given the choice between no organic matter and a guarantee of no weeds, or plenty of organic matter with maybe a few weeds, I'd always choose the organic matter because I know how good it is for the garden. And besides, with all of the good decomposers we've got in our mixture here, I'm not going to worry too much anyway. These seeds will probably break down too. Another resource gardeners often need is peat moss. But unless you're fortunate enough to have a peat bog in the backyard, it isn't often easy to find for free. But there is something else that works just as well. Come on with me, and I'll show you how to find it. Aha. Uh -huh. The inside of rotted stumps and logs, especially hardwood logs, that you find in the deep, dark, moist woods is a perfect substitute for peat moss. I've run trials in the greenhouse with it and it works just as well. Now, notice it's brown, it's crumbly, looks an awful lot like peat moss, and one way you can tell whether it's ready to use is whether there are little plants already growing in it. They indicate that this is broken down enough already to support new life. Okay, when I find a good spot like this, I'm just going to take handfuls of it and put it through a screen so I can make it small, about the size of peat moss, and it'll work better in my potting mix. Now, if you don't happen to have a large stump like this with a hollow heart, you can do just as well with logs that are rotting on the ground. If I peel the bark back off of this birch log, you'll notice that I have a material here that's nice and broken down and looking pretty good. If there are no plants growing in it, Check and see that it's nice and dark and crumbly before you add it to your mix. And always, before you try and grow some plant that you're particularly fond of in a mix you've made from this, give it a try first with just a couple of test seeds. Now, after I put that through the screen, you really have a beautiful looking peat moss substitute. In fact, when it's moist like this, it even looks nicer than the store-bought peat moss, which is in my left hand. So the next time you run out of peat moss, you can just take a trip out to the woods.
Okay, let's get to work. There's your fork. Okay. Now, we've got another great source of compost here. A neighbor of ours had some bales of spoiled straw. Spoiled hay would be excellent, too. Now, Elliot, I'm just going to throw a layer of this to start us off. That sounds great. You know, a compost heap is a lot like a smorgasbord. And if you want the compost heap to digest its ingredients well, they want to be mixed the same way the smorgasbord mixes your meal. Maybe too much mixture isn't good for you, it's great in here. And the way you decide that mixture is to alternate layers of carbonaceous ingredients and nitrogenous ingredients. Oh, darn, big words, hard to understand, no. Dry brown ingredient, wet green ingredient. So I'm gonna call seaweed a wet green ingredient. The difference is that the dry brown ingredients have a lot of carbon, the wet green ingredients have a lot of nitrogen. The combination of the two and the compost heap digests everything beautifully. So on top of the straw, we're gonna put on a layer of that seaweed we just got. This is a moist green ingredient. Lots of nitrogen in it. The type of thing that'll help everything else break down. There, that's spread out. Now, after I've put on a moist green layer, I always take a shovel full of soil. The reason I do that is that we really need all of those microorganisms, those soil bacteria, to get going on this. And just one shovelful will do it, just as if you were sprinkling sugar on top of a cake. It's like inoculating the heat with a little workers. To continue Barbara's cooking metaphor, a lot of what we're doing is like making a big lasagna. Okay, I'm back to the noodles. The noodles are the dry brown. Now, these weeds we cut aren't exactly brown, but they are hard to decompose. They are low in nitrogen, high in carbon, just like we want in a dry brown ingredient. So they're going to make a perfect layer. Okay, now we need an active moist ingredient as fire to ignite all of this fuel. So what's next here, Elliot, the crabs? I think the crabs would be a perfect ingredient at this stage in the lasagna. They have just the sort of activity that will help break down even the hardest to decompose dry brown ingredients. One of the advantages of getting all sorts of variety in your ingredients is you get to make this wonderful smorgasbord lasagna sandwich, anything you want to call it, that because of its variety is really going to turn out a first-class compost. Okay, now that we've got another of those hot ingredients on there, we're going to get some more soil on. Get some of those little buggies in there for the action. What's next, Elliot? Well, I feel like we're the master chefs at the compost ritz, Barbara. I'm just going to add a little bit of this brewery waste in there, because I don't know much about it, but it sort of looks like it would be nice with the crab and the soil. That's just a, an extra touch. How about another layer of the uh, uh, old straw over there? How's that? Okay, I think a little of the horse manure we got would be another great layer at this point. Excellent. Yeah, I'll just fork it on air in a nice depth. And... Now, the manure is a hot ingredient, but I'm not going to worry about adding any soil to it because it's already chocked full of microorganisms, all sorts of bacteria, fungi, not to mention worms. Okay, after an active layer, we're back to the inactive. The carbon, the nitrogen, the dry brown is going on now, and that'll be more of these weeds we got from the neighbor's field. Well, after the horse manure went on, I don't know if I want to continue with the culinary metaphor, but however you look at it, this is really pretty nice. And I'm sure that after this heap sits for a year, and it's all mature, our garden will find it delicious. Well, Barbara, that was certainly a successful trip. I'll say. We found all kinds of great compost materials, all in one trip. And of course, this is the result that we're after. Something that looks like beautiful, rich, crumbly, dark garden soil. Only even better. Now, we were helped in our search by this publication from the Department of Agriculture in Maine and it details where in the state you can find different wastes and what they are and, and who to contact. And even if we hadn't got what we got today, hey, there are a lot of others. There's apple pomace from cider mills. There's the vegetable wastes from canneries. 
all sorts of opportunities. Now, the authors of this publication have told me that they have sent copies to every other State Department of Agriculture. So call yours up, and if they haven't put out something like this yet, give them a lot of encouragement. Sure, and even if they don't give you something like this, you might try your Yellow Pages. We did that. We looked under seafood for those crab wastes and brewery for the brewery wastes. Get creative. We're still looking. And while we're waiting a year for all those ingredients we got today to break down into something beautiful like this, goodbye and good gardening. on TLC, get started on easy home projects that anyone can handle here on Homebodies. Then indulge your creative side with Debbie Stapley on Crafts & Company here on TLC.